bathtubs. Not the first thing that comes to your mind when thinking about cars. Now, I'm not talking about cars that have been turned into bathtubs, and I'm also not talking about this car, which quite literally is a bathtub. No, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the bathtub curve and how it relates to cars. <laughs> If you were to graph the entire lifespan of a car, most people would think that the graph would be drawn like this. The vertical axis being the chance of failure or the failure rate and the horizontal axis being time or usage. This graph is assuming that the car when new has no problems and as time and usage go up the chance of failure of any component in the car increases to the time that it's at its end of its life cycle. This would be wrong. The actual graph of the lifespan of a car would look a lot more like this which very much looks like the cross-section of a bathtub, hence the name the bathtub curve. Now, the bathtub curve has three phases to it. You have the initial phase, which is when all of the kinks are getting worked out. These, this is the time when you bring the car back to the dealer and you know, you're going back and forth to make everything right. The second phase is the stable phase where everything is pretty much working just as it was designed. And then you have the third phase, which is the end of life phase. And this is where all of the components are starting to break down one by one till the car is ready for the junker. So I'll go into detail on each of these phases a little bit later in this video, but I just want to mention that the second phase, which is the stable phase of a car's life, is something that I refer to as the sweet spot. And I have a video that I did on the sweet spot in my video, New or Used. I'll also put a link down below. So the very interesting thing about the bathtub curve is that it works for anything that's manufactured. It's an engineering illustration to show the lifespan of any product. Now, this is good for computers, refrigerators, toasters, cars, and something as simple as a light bulb. In fact, I will use a light bulb as an example of the bathtub curve. Now we've all had the experience of bringing home a light bulb from the store and that light bulb, when we installed it, failed. You put it in, pop, it failed. It failed during the first phase. It never got a chance to get into the stable period. Now, if that light bulb would have worked out of the box and got into the stable period, there's a very good chance that it would have gotten to this period, which is the end of life phase, where the failure rate increases as the usage goes on exponentially, right? So the uh, light will fail eventually. So now, it, it's an interesting thing that light bulbs, the industry standard for the failure of light bulbs, in, in other words, for this to happen is actually 3%. So 3% of all light bulbs that you're gonna get are going to fail. And that's just the industry standard. There's a way to bring in robust engineering to make light bulbs last a very long time, just like cars, but they don't do it. And the reason they don't do it is because they want you to buy more light bulbs and it's very expensive to engineer top quality in a light bulb that would last a long time. The oldest uh, light bulb that's still in use was installed in 1901 and it's still going today. So obviously you can engineer a robust light bulb. They just don't do it. Now the light bulb is a very simple item, right? A car, on the other hand, is not so simple. In fact, a car has 30,000 pieces to it, 10,000 which are moving, at least in a combustion powered car. Now, that's a lot of moving parts, and moving parts are going to have more of a failure rate at the beginning and more of a failure rate at the end. But even the non-moving parts are going to have failure rates. 
So now let's look at this and how the failure rate occurs in a car. As a consumer, you would expect that your car will have no defects when you buy it. That is the expectation. However, that is not sometimes the way it pans out. Now, the worst offenders when you buy a new car in this area here would be anything with electronic circuitry and also any fuel delivery systems such as high capacity fuel pumps and injectors. These are the things that get affected right here. Now, if you have a problem, you're most likely having to go back to the dealer and take care of that. Now, the second phase, which as I said, I call the sweet spot or the stable phase, okay? So this is the stable phase. Now, this is the phase that cars will work just as they were designed. All the 30,000 parts to the car will, will work for their life cycle that they were designed for. So that's this, okay? And then eventually, each one of those components have to endure this stable period. And like I said with the light bulb, if it is able to get through this period, it will eventually get to this period, which is the end of life cycle. So now, the great manufacturers are trying to bring the failure rate down, okay? and bring the end of life cycle out, okay? So they're trying to um, make this move in that direction. And Toyota is the best manufacturer at this. Um, they have the lowest failure rate coming out of the factory. Fiat has one of the worst. So just to give you sort of the uh, both sides of the spectrum, and Toyota obviously would include Lexus. So what we're really talking about is quality control at the factory. Now this is something that the Japanese got right back in the 70s. And the way that they got this right was they put a lot more thought into the engineering and got the end of life phase out. And they also did a lot more testing on each one of those parts and didn't settle for less and had the highest quality industry standard for reliability. This was known as the Toyota production system. Toyota mastered it and all car manufacturers tried to emulate it. The TPS system is the standard not only for car production but for everything that's manufactured. Toyota invented the very best quality control system that's known in manufacturing. That's very important because that is how Toyota and all of the rest of the Asian manufacturers that rode on the coattails of Toyota managed to break into the American market back in the 70s and 80s by bringing the failure rate down, customer satisfaction you might say right there, and the end of life phase out, which gave them loyalty. People who bought Toyotas in those decades were more likely to buy another Toyota because of their experience. That is what changed the world with the big three who are now adopting the TPS system and trying to do their best at bringing the failure rate down and this out. They still haven't gotten there, but they've gotten a lot better. So you look at this graph and you think, well, wait a minute. Anything that happens in this first phase is covered under factory warranty, correct? I mean, if it's gonna be happening within the first three years, 36,000 miles, which is traditionally your comprehensive warranty on any car, that will be covered by the factory to repair it. And the answer is sure, you know, that is true. But you as a consumer, you want a car that is in the stable phase from the beginning, right? You don't wanna be dealing with these issues. And if you're constantly running back and forth from the dealer trying to figure out all of these little issues, it becomes a total hassle. And if you have too many issues, you have a lemon. Very little chance of that happening, but still it's there. So now the question is, if you want to get right into the stable period of a car's life, then why not just buy right here, which is a used car, right? That's what you want. You want to be in this stable period with as little repair cost and hassles as can be. 
So that's really important. This stable period, which is otherwise called the sweet spot, is where you want to be during your ownership. Another reason why buying a used car could be the better choice is because by being in this stable period, you've eliminated both the initial failure rates as well as the heavy depreciation that happens when a car is bought brand new. So you're getting into this stable period, right, without having to pay the big bucks for it. So that's the bathtub curve. If you hadn't heard the term before, now you have, and you know a little bit more about it. So thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. I do read them. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more material from me. And share this video with friends or family that are about to buy a new or used car. I'm Greg, your car angel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.